Hello, folks. Welcome to our Q&A webinar. Uh, we're happy to be here, North America team. Uh, my name is Georgia. I'm the customer success manager here at Magic Clan, calling in from Portland, Oregon, and I'll let Mia introduce herself. Oh, sorry, my mic was off. Hi, guys. Um, I'm a customer success specialist here located in Orlando, Florida. Um, and we're happy to have you here today for this Q&A and answer all and any questions that you might have about Magic Plan. Yeah, so to get started, you'll see the comment bubble um, in your YouTube channel. You can go ahead and start posting questions. We are here to answer any questions that you have about the Magic Plan app, cloud, uh, use cases, things you've been trying to do but have not been able to figure out, feel free to post your questions in the chat. And while we wait, um, we do have some common questions that come up from people. Uh, Mia, what is a, a question that you've been hearing from folks lately? The main one I have been hearing is room within a room. So a lot of people will have an existing floor plan or maybe they're using manual scan or a different type of way to create rooms. Um, and they'll typically have like a closet or a bathroom within a room. Um, and most people don't know that you actually need to create those rooms separately and then assemble them together. Side note, I'm very sorry if you guys hear dogs barking. Um, but yeah, so Georgia will show us here how to create that room within a room. Um, and essentially when you're scanning or creating a floor plan with Magic Plan, again, you just want to think of every single room separately. So if you have an office, bath, um, office uh, bedroom with a closet or a bathroom, you want to create all of those rooms separately and then put them together. So I've added a room here. I'm just going to change the dimensions, get it a little bit bigger. And then let's say that this kitchen had a small closet inside. Um, it makes sense that you think to just add the closet inside of the kitchen, but as Mia said, we do consider those separate rooms, so they need to be assembled together. Um, so what I can do here is the kitchen is now just a square. I'm going to open up a space right here in the lower corner for a closet. So I'm going to first tap on the wall where I want to adjust the shape of the room. Um, where these triangles are is where I'm going to add a corner here from the editor. I'm going to tap add a corner. You'll see this section is now highlighted blue, meaning I can move this section of the room however I want to. Um, fun note about that, you can also tap on corners and move the shape of the room that way. Um, but that is not what we're wanting to do here. So add that corner. I'm going to make a space here. I can change the dimensions just by clicking on the walls um, or tapping on the walls. I'm on a simulator, so this is on my computer, but you will be doing this from your mobile or tablet device. Uh, you can also click the dimension here and then change it um, from our scroll. So I'll just try to do that here. Now I have this open space. What I'm gonna do next is insert another room if you have the dimensions of that second smaller room, you can go ahead and add a square room. You could also use defined corners. Um, my personal favorite is actually inserting a filler room because what it does is it inserts a, a room or you'll see even a wall into that open space in your floor plan. So I'm gonna click filler room. I'm going to select closet here. You'll see this square appears on your floor plan. You're gonna tap and drag it to the open space and then release and a closet has been automatically added. So this is considered a separate room, but you just filled in that space and changed the shape of that bigger room. Um, so that is going to be, um, I would say, the easiest way to insert a smaller room into a larger room, especially if you don't have all of the set dimensions and don't want to um, spend the time trying to get the dimensions correct clip to assemble it. The filler room just adjusts it with the, the dimensions that are already there. Any questions? Have people tried that before? Usually when I share the filler room, people aren't really familiar with it. So Mia, I think you're muted here. 
that keeps going on mute. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say we do have a couple room creation options that are really fun. So yeah, we have the obviously auto scan, which is super great, uses LiDAR. Manual scan can also use LiDAR, doesn't need it. Um, and then we do have square room, defined corners and fillers. So if you wanna enter a pre-created room, if you're new with using Magic Plan, you just kinda wanna play around. Um, and put together a floor plan, those are great options. Or if the scan options aren't working for you, adding a square room to find corners is a really great option, especially paired with the Bluetooth laser. Yeah, I was actually talking to a client the other day about defined corners, because we do have an option. Um, if you already have a, an image or a PDF visual of a created floor plan, there is a way to import that photo into Magic Plan and draw over it. Um, and I think Define Corners is the best option for that because while it's not the actual drawing within the app, it's the closest you're going to get to being able to draw a room. Um, so I can just demonstrate that here. Uh, let's say we're going to add the living room. I'm going to make some space. I'm just going to tap on the first corner that I want added here. And you go from corner to corner. And the nice thing about this is you can adjust the shape. So if you know that it's a oddly shaped room, um, you can go ahead and add that. Let's just say it goes here and then I'm going to connect it. And here's, here's the shape of the room. And then as Mia said, you can adjust the dimensions still um, the same way as you would, would with any other room you create. Uh, and connecting a Bluetooth laser really helps to get those set dimensions. Um, we have a, a list of Bluetooth lasers that you can pair with Magic Plan. Bosch is typically the brand that people see the most success with. So that's that's a brand we always recommend and you can find that list in our help center. But once you have a compatible Bluetooth laser, what you do is you turn it on, you turn your app on, your mobile tablet device on, you make sure that they're both connected to Bluetooth. And uh, once you confirm that they're connected via Bluetooth, you then go into the app and you can tap on any measurement dimension here in your floor plan, tap laser, and the connected Bluetooth laser will show here, giving you an option to connect it to the app. And once it's connected, you just get a dimension um, with that Bluetooth laser on any wall. You can even sometimes, if you're setting a distance, let's say, between an object and a wall, you can even use a Bluetooth laser for that. Once you get the dimension, it shows on the Bluetooth laser that automatically populates into your floor plan and magic plan and changes the length of that wall, let's say. Um, so it's, if you're looking for more accuracy, we always recommend pairing the app with a Bluetooth laser. Another Mia, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead, Mia. Oh, I was just going to say another good way to edit dimensions or really anything that on the floor plan walls, floors, objects is the details menu. Most people don't actually know about the details menu. So it's on the upper right corner where George is clicking. Um, so this menu is super great. Again, you can access it floor, room, wall, object, anything in the floor plan. Um, and this will allow you to very quickly edit the dimensions. You also see here, you'll have the option to add photos and notes if that's something that you're interested in. Um, and then if you are utilizing our custom forms, this is where you would find those custom forms. So if you're inspecting or if you need to fill out something for um, a floor plan that you're doing, you know you need to fill out that information every single time for a specific room, for a specific object, for a wall, you can put a form there. Um, but yeah, details is really, really helpful if you, especially if you can't see those dimensions that are visible and, you know, sometimes it's not always super easy when you have a ton of objects overlapping. Yeah, it's a definitely a, a place that you want to know about in the Magic Plan app. You're going to find a lot of information that you may be looking for in that details section. And as Mia said, it's on any level of your project. So the detail section of this project is, you'll see very different from the detail section of that wall that I was just on. We do have a few people that are viewing this webinar. So we would love to hear from you. Any questions, anything that you'd like to learn about in Magic Land, we are here for you. I uh, wanna make sure that you're using these 20, next 20 minutes um, to your advantage. Yeah. 
It is not a lot of time, guys. So definitely make use of it, especially while you have us here live to help you. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're totally happy to help. And please feel free to drop any questions in that chat on the right side. Um, I guess in the meantime, we can teach you a little bit more about Magic Plan. Um, something else that we get asked a lot is customizing the actual export output. So if you have like a report PDF, sketch files, anything like that, um, you can customize that. So to include, exclude certain dimensions, photos, that kind of thing. And you will do that uh, for any export type that you have with your free or uh, subscription-based plan. You just go to that export type, tap configure, and you're going to have several options here to customize it. Um, the report PDF is going to give you a lot more detail than some of our other file types that may just give you the sketch of the floor plan. Um, and you can, you can change the scale. That is a question that I often get of how can I adjust the scale to make sure it fits on uh, a printed paper the way I need it to be, or sometimes architects or uh, the city needs that floor plan to be in a certain scale. Um, Pedro has a question here. How can you export a DWG with good quality? Um, the DWG file is going to be just a set quality type. Um, I can go in here. Let me make sure. I'm getting, you know what, now that I'm saying that, I believe we only have DXF, which can be converted to a DWG, Pedro. So in the sketch file, you'll see I tap configure. Um, the file formats, you can select which file type, file format that you want exported. And DXF is often one that people will use if they're wanting to import their floor plan into any type of CAD software. Um, and you can, there are some tools online if you just search DXF to DWG, how to convert that file type. But a lot of, if you are using CAD software, a lot of that software will also accept a DXF file. Um, and Mia, feel free to chime in if you have any other info there. Yeah, depending, I know for AutoCAD, and it, again, depending on the type of software in, in AutoCAD that you have, most of it will accept DXF. Uh, I also see here that Autodesk or AutoCAD, they have their own file converter as well. So that might be, you know, very accurate if you're using it with that software. Um, but yeah, that's what I've most commonly seen is if DXF isn't working, they'll convert it to DWG and then import it into AutoCAD. Um, and then we do have those 3D IFC exports too, if you're looking for that as well. Yeah, Great. so those that will be in the 3D model file type here, and we have OBJ, IFC, and USDZ. Um, we have a really great article in our help center. It's just called export, uh, it's export formats. Um, and that is gonna explain how you can utilize some of these different file types and what's included because uh, and yet, yeah, thanks, Mia. She, Mia just posted that uh, article in the chat that you can copy and paste. Some of these file types are not going to include all of the details that you have in Magic Plan. So let's say you've built out an entire floor plan in Magic Plan. You have furniture, objects. Um, it's a it's a full plan. Some of these file types you may not see those furniture objects that you've added. Um, definitely with our our three D model file types, there's there's only one um, option that will sometimes include the objects in 3D, and it's still only going to include the objects that you can also see in 3D in Magic Plan, because you'll notice that some um, objects do not render in 3D at the moment. Um, and then some of those other, the DWG that I, or the DXF we were talking about, that sometimes is not going to include those furniture objects. So that's just something to be aware of. Thank you, Pedro. And let us know if you have any follow-up questions on that. Um, but yeah, going back to the configuration, um, there are a few things here that a lot of folks 
do look for um, largely how to change dimensions that are showing in your, your file. So you can adjust that under the floor plan dimensions, just enabling or disabling the toggle if you want information included. Another thing that it's a bit newer with Magic Plan, I would say, I mean, this came out last fall, um, but some people may or may not be aware of it at this point is you can select whether to include attachments in your report PDF. Um, this is report PDF specific because this is the file type that will include photos, notes, custom forms, custom attributes, any of that extra detail you're adding. And under include attachments, you can select how much detail you want shown here. Um, so for example, photos, you can select all or none. Um, dimensions, when you're editing a dimension in the app, you can select whether it's included in your report PDF. So selected only means that the dimensions that you selected when making the edits in your floor plan, only those will show in your report PDF. Otherwise, you have all or none. Any other questions we have from people viewing in? can be about anything, not just exporting yeah. or editing in the app. It can be about the cloud too, the, the web version of Magic Plan. Um, but I will say in the meantime, I guess going off of exporting, uh, we do have what's called elevation view. Um, so if you're someone that wants to edit, like looking at a wall, um, or you just want to export this wall view of, you know, cabinets, electrical things um, on that wall. We do have this great elevation view that allows you to do that. And then where Georgia is here. So clicking into that details menu and turning on display elevation in report, it will show a photo of this wall, just how you see it here on your actual report PDF. Um, so that can be really, really helpful if you're showing, you know, cabinetry, where outlets are going, windows are going against walls. Um, and as you can see here, you can add any object that will be against the wall or on a wall. And then you can set the distance from the floor there as what George is doing, again, using that handy details menu to do that. Um, and then you can move it from side to side if you need to. So this is really helpful if you're trying to figure out exactly where things are going. If you have kitchen cabinets with like an outlet in between the upper and lower cabinets. Um, so elevation view is, is super awesome and very helpful. And just to show again, if you're in the 2D mode here, and I, I did add a window to a, an internal wall. Um, in the 2D mode, you can select 3D. So that's going to show you the 3D plan, which I'm sure folks are aware of. And then elevation will show the wall elevation. Um, and then you can use these arrows too to see all of the elevation views within that room that you're currently in. Super helpful. And Georgia actually just taught me something recently that I did not know. <laughs> yes, I. Uh, <laughs> that is a fun one. We've had a few people asking about it. So um, what you can do here, and people may or may not know already, is you can add walls, partial walls in a room. Um, and that does have to be, it means it's perpendicular from one of the structural walls of the room. That's not going to be the partition wall. Uh, which is actually an object in the app uh, just by going to insert an object. But here I've clicked on a wall where I want to add a partial wall. And here it is. This is considered structural part of the room. It has the same um, functionalities as the rest of the walls in your room. You can add wall objects here. It's going to have the same height as the rest of the walls in the room. So you aren't able to customize the height of this wall. If I go to the details section, you'll see I can only customize the length here. Um, but as I said, you can add wall objects. And oftentimes people need to add outlets to these types of walls. So if I go to electrical, I'm just going to, let's say I'm going to add a switch first. Um, you can see I can drag this object, but it's only appearing on the right side. That's strange. How do I get it? I need it on the other side. I need it on the left side of this wall. Well, there's a very handy tip. You go to the editor bar, click rotate, and it's going to flip it to the other side of the wall. Um, so when in doubt, this editor bar oftentimes has what you're looking for, whether that's even 
you know, duplicating. I need another one of these. Oh, but it's on the outside of the wall. I'm just going to click rotate. And now I have it here. Um, and to follow up on what Mia was saying with elevation view, if I look at the elevation view here, um, now you see we have this object. I can adjust it. Super. So that is, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a helpful tip that it honestly, people probably don't think about it. Rotate, you're thinking of rotating the object that's actually going to flip it to switch it to the other side of a wall. Nice. Well, we do have eight minutes, I believe, or 10 minutes, I believe. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in this last 10 minutes while you have us. Um, if not, we're happy to keep showing you more features of the app and things like that. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, just feel free to ask them on the side. Again, it can be about anything, app editing, not editing, general magic plan questions. We're happy to help. Yes, we would love to hear from you. While we are waiting for people to chime in here, um, I'm going to go ahead and I share a different screen um, because we at Magic Plan have a lot of awesome resources that folks can utilize. Um, so I want to just guide you through that a little bit. Um, here you'll see our community. So when you're in the app on the lower bar, the home screen, you'll see an option that says community. Um, you can also access this from the Magic Plan Cloud. If you go here to the help icon, ask the community is there that you can click on. You can also access it from our website. A lot of access points. I posted a link too, so you can access it there too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Um, and so this is, we have, um, as you'll see upcoming events, we post a lot of our, or we post all of our upcoming webinars here if you're ever curious about when we have new webinars, you can also go to Magic Plan, the Magic Plan section, and see webinars where you can RSVP. Um, Magic Plan objects. This is for folks who utilize our custom object manager. It's available um, with report and estimate subscriptions. As a free user, you do have access to all features offered by Magic Plan, largely to make sure you get familiar with what we have available and you can determine what best fits your needs. Um, but these are file types that you can utilize for the custom object manager. There's also a section to provide project product feedback. So any feature requests that you have, you can go to here, click on the link. And if you see any bugs, you can report a bug. All of this information, our product team is checking weekly. Um, and with feature suggestions, I'll go ahead and just click on it here because um, the options you have, you can you can look through what other people have requested and you can upvote them and add your own comments. And we highly suggest doing that just because the more upvotes that a feature request has, the more comments, the more likely our product team is going to really take a look at it and see if it is a, a, a request that will benefit a large pool of Magic Plan users. Um, from here, you also have our video tutorials, which uh, we have moved to YouTube actually, and it has been awesome. It's a, it's a lot more, more people are making use of them, watching them. Um, but here is an outline of the, the videos that you can watch. And then if you click on a link, it's gonna take you to YouTube where you'll see the entire playlist related to it. Um, and these are all really to help you get started. Getting started with Magic Plan is going to be more general overview about Magic Plan. What's the difference between the app and the cloud? How do you get your account set up? Um, creating a project is going to be all of those videos related to how you create that first project. What are the different options available to me to create a project? How do I add objects? Editing your floor plan is going to be more detailed about how to make edits to those rooms that you're creating after you've assembled your floor plan. How do you edit dimensions? How do you um, pretty much do the things that me and I have been talking about today? What are those little tips that we have um, so that you can make the edits you need? We also have certification e-courses. Um, so the videos are typically no more than five to eight minutes, some shorter than that. Um, so they're really quick, easy ways to visualize what you're trying to do. Um, if you are more of a more process oriented, you want to see the steps, you want to read through it, walk through it. 
our certification courses might be great for you and then broken down into shorter micro learnings. For the certifications, they're anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. And once you complete the course, you are uh, you receive a certification that could be shared with your employer. Um, you could share it on LinkedIn really to show folks that you know Magic Plan, that you're utilizing the tool, that you're gaining expertise in it. Um, so those are the main highlights in our community. Oh, one thing that is actually very important to highlight is that you can connect with other Magic Plan users. Um, this has been really active. We're super happy to see so many users connecting with each other, reaching out, asking questions. Um, we are always monitoring it, so we'll make sure that you get a, an answer, the information you're looking for, but we really value this as a place where other Magic Plan folks can, users can uh, share their best practices, share how they've made the app work in their businesses or the project that they're trying to work on. Any questions? Well, we have four minutes left here. It can be about the community too. Um, I definitely say, as Georgia mentioned, this is a great place if just to find all the resources and obviously connect with other people. Um, but again, any questions while we just have these last couple minutes, getting down to three minutes about app, cloud, uh, we're happy to show you guys anything or answer any questions that might be, even if it's very specific to your workflow, we'll give you the best mm -hmm. answer we can don't mind at all. If people haven't seen it already, this is the Magic Plan Cloud. Um, we do get a lot of questions about how can I edit my floor plan on the computer? I've created it in my on my mobile device, but I can't do anything here in the cloud. Um, the cloud is really a project management tool and a way to make sure your projects are backed up. So all of the editing, that you have to, that you need to do in your floor plan will be done on your mobile or tablet device. Um, but within the cloud, you can still click in a project um, and you can visualize, my uh, computer's taking a minute here to load it, but you can visualize the project you've created, you can see the files, um, and then you can you know, share your project with folks. Um, we do have a question that's coming in here from Pedro. Thank you. Um, what about Rico camera? Is this a question that you want to take me? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm assuming you mean Rico for the 360 cameras. Um, so those are very helpful. And I'll also link the article here so you can make sure that you have a compatible camera. We only are compatible with about four of them at the moment. Um, but feel free to leave a feature request if you're using a different one that you like a lot better. Um, so I just commented that article, but essentially this camera will integrate directly with Magic Plan. Um, so all you'll do is go into your floor plan and you'll add what's called an annotation object. These objects are available for report and estimate users. Um, and there is called a 360 panoramic or 360 camera object. Georgia will show you here in just a second. So just clicking insert object going to the top annotations and I think it's just called yeah it's there not, you go it's not this one it is this one yeah so 360 panoramic and if you see where that little red arrow is facing that's where this photo is going to be taken um, and after you've placed that again opening that handy details menu and going to photos and notes. And then you'll see here, you have the option to connect that Rico camera directly. So, you know, just making sure you have that on, the Bluetooth is on, everything's connecting. Um, and then you'll be able to take that 360 photo. If you don't have this type of camera, that is not an issue. You can still take a panoramic photo with your tablet, phone, you can upload a panoramic photo and you can still create a virtual tour. Um, so you'll just do that per room, add this little object, then take the photo per room. And after you've completed that, you'll be able to see the completed version when you log into the Magic Plan Cloud, so the desktop. And you can actually, um, you know, look at it and walk through it like a virtual tour, most of the virtual tours that you see. Um, but again, viewing that is is limited to the cloud, but it is really great. So if you're sharing like the URL link of a project with a client or stakeholder, they'll be able to see the project in 2D, 3D, and they'll have that virtual walkthrough. Um, Pedro, do you have any specific questions about using the Rico camera or anything like that? 
any other suggestions here, Georgia, for using this camera? One thing I'll just add that sometimes uh, people ask when they're just getting acquainted with Magic Plan is if they can take a 360 photo and then the floor plan will be created from that 360 photo. And that's not the case. Um, you still need to create your floor plan utilizing one of the options we have here to add your room. So whether that's the scan um, or adding a square room, all the options we went through earlier, you'll have to create your floor plan and then you can go in and add your 360 photos. Cause as Mia said, it's the purpose is really to add a, have a virtual tour of the 2D floor plan sketch that someone's seeing so that it, they have both and you're gonna be creating both. Uh, Pedro, you're welcome. Thank you for interacting with us today, asking your questions. Um, we are at time, so uh, we appreciate those who joined us and um, definitely recommend that you would attend some of our upcoming webinars. And if there's ever questions that you have that you wanna connect live and see it walk through, our Q&A webinar is a great option for that. Um, if you have questions at any time, feel free to reach out to us at support at magicplan.app. Um, that is a great place to, when in doubt, reach us, out to us here. We can connect you with sales if we need to. Um, if it's a bug that you're experiencing, we connect with products. So um, please save that email to your, your contacts and we are here to help you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you, Pedro, for your questions. Um, definitely check out our YouTube library. If you don't remember everything that we said, it's all recorded there for you. And uh, this webinar will be there as well. All right. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.